In this video, we're going to be creating a heart with CSS, much like the one that you can see here. Um, it's not entirely difficult to do this, but we are going to look at some cool things that uh, involve sort of rotations and uh, transforming and uh, basically two pseudo elements that will provide uh, this shape. Um, now, regardless of whether you actually want to produce a heart shape, it's quite interesting to understand the process that we go through to actually create this shape. So you can actually learn some things about CSS along the way, uh, despite the fact you may never use a CSS heart on your website. So um, with that said, let's go ahead over to the code and uh, start writing this out. Okay, so over into my text editor, um, I've got a basic page set up here with a title, a style sheet linked in, which I also have open in my text editor, and I've just got a body here. I'm just going to add one element. That's all we need to do. Um, we're going to use pseudo elements to handle the rest, which sounds a little more tricky than it is if you've never come across them before. So let's go ahead and create this element. I'm going to just create a div with a class of heart, which makes sense. And we're going to refer to this class to style everything that we need. So the first thing to do is set a couple of properties um, just basically relating to this general heart shape without any uh, pseudo elements here. And this is basically just going to say that we want the position to be relative. The We want to set a little bit of margin and we want to give it a height and width as well. So let's go ahead and set the positioning first, it's relative. So this is just going to be position relative to its container, whether that's within the body like it is at the moment or another element like a div container on your page. Uh, we'll go ahead and give it a, a margin of 20 pixels. Basically just give it a little bit of uh, space around the outside. And we're going to give it a height and width as well. Now this might not make sense at the moment, but we'll, we'll shape our heart to these heights and widths. This doesn't necessarily mean that the heart is going to be this size, it just means that we're going to provide a nice container for this to sit in. So let's go ahead and open uh, the element inspector and you can already see here the blue area is the 170 by 200 space. We've got a little margin around the outside and uh, because this is obviously a block display element, it just is filling the whole width of the page. Uh, but you can modify that if you need after you've actually created the heart shape. So we're now going to start, start to sort of introduce pseudo elements um, and these are just elements that don't actually exist on the page but they're created with CSS and, and, and stylable. You can add content to them which is sort of the, the usual way to go about uh, with CSS um, uh, pseudo elements or pseudo elements. So I'm creating two selectors here. Um, we're going to apply some general properties to the before and after pseudo elements. Um, so I've just comma separated these and I've used the colon to define the before and after pseudo elements. Fairly straightforward. Um, now we're going to take a look at sort of actually, you know, how this works. Uh, so I'm going to go and say content, content, hello. Now that, that might look a bit strange if you're sort of not from a CSS background. But let's take a look what that's done. Uh, it's provided us with two hello elements on the page, a before and an after. So what we're now going to do is we're sort of exploiting CSS here and we're doing, being a bit hacky. We're going to create two elements here which we're going to bend inwards, create a V shape and that's going to turn into our heart. So um, what we can now do is go ahead and just use this as empty, sort of, but this is an empty string. Um, we're going to set the position of these, both these elements to absolute. And what that does is just allows us to give a top and a left absolute position value, which we need to do within this uh, to be able to, you know, place them where we need and then rotate them and everything. Um, and we're also going to go ahead and give these a width as well. So to start out, let's go ahead and give these a width that I know is going to work. So, you know, you're not expected to sort of know these, uh, you know, off by heart or anything. These are just values I've played around with. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and set a background of red. Uh, and we'll now go ahead and take a look. And this starts to get a little bit more interesting. So we now see we've got this red rectangle. Um, we've actually got two red rectangles. If we inspect this, you can see that we've got a before and an after. Um, so if for, the, if, for example, for the after one, uh, I went ahead and just created a selector here. And I said heart after. And I was to go ahead and say left 500 pixels. You can see that that uh, after element moves across the page 500 pixels. So um, that's basically demonstrating that we've now got two elements on the page. And what we actually want to do is, is like I've said before, bend this one inwards this way V uh, or, or, or this sort of 45 degree angle, this one in at 45 degree 
degree angle. So we get the sort of classic V shape of a heart. And then we'll go ahead and use border radiuses to, to transform the rest. So what we need to do is now target the before and after separately because one we need to rotate minus 45 degrees and one we need to rotate 45 degrees. So let's go ahead and say heart before and we'll copy this and we'll say heart after. Okay so for the heart before Four, uh, we actually want the left of this offset by, or the along the x-axis to be offset by 100 pixels, and we want the after to be an offset of zero from the left of left hand side. So that now looks like this. We've sort of got this sort of you know 100% offset, uh, which happens to be the width of these containers. So now these are, but basically plush next to each other. Um, so what we're going to do now is go ahead and choose the origin for the transformation. Because what we're going to do is we're going to use the rotate function and provide a 45 and a minus 45 degree for each one. So um, this does get a little bit confusing, but let's go ahead and, and do this. Um, so we're going to say transform origin. And all this basically does is it changes the origin from which the element is transformed transformed using the transform property. So for the before pseudo element, we're going to say zero from the X uh, on the X uh, offset and 100% on the Y offset. And we're going to basically just duplicate this and apply the WebKit prefix. Um, because I'm using Chrome uh, or if you're using another browser that uses a WebKit rendering engine, then you'll need to use the WebKit prefix as of this video being published. Uh, so let's go ahead and copy this down. Uh, we need to change the values slightly. The origin for this is going to be X 100% and Y offset 100%. So now that we've got the origins done, uh, that's not really going to have changed much because we haven't actually provided any transformations here. What we're now going to do is start to get to the fun part. So we're going to use the transform property. We're going to provide the rotate function and we're going to provide a minus 45 degree angle for the before and a 45 degree angle for the after. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we use the transform property. We pass in the rotate function and we say minus 45 and we use the degrees here. So now we can do that, but with the WebKit prefix because that's required also. And we can go ahead and copy and paste these two lines down to this one. In fact, let's take a look before that at what this has done. So that's sort of bent that in this way. Now we'll also see that this one is then bent the opposite way, creating our V shape. So let's go ahead and just paste this down. We want that to be a 45 degree angle. And there we are. So we've got this lovely V shape here now. Now don't worry that it's sort of touching the top of the page. We uh, will rectify that in a moment, not just with a top property on the before and after selectors, but we'll also need to round out these edges here. Now bear in mind that these are just two rotated elements and we can sort of uh, you know have a little deeper look into this by providing a border. So I'm going to say a border of one pixel solid and black and that's basically going to let us see the outline of both of the elements here. So you can see that we've basically just got two rectangles. Um, we've got the before and the after. They're just overlaid into each other. They've been rotated. So now what we can do is we need to scrap that and we're going to go ahead and we're going to provide a border radius. Now with the border radius, uh, we have uh, four different uh, values that we can pass in here. So I'm just going to do this and I want to say 50 pixels and 50 pixels. And what this is going to do is it's going to bend or, or rot uh, apply the radius to the top left, the top right. And we want to ignore the bottom ones. And that's going to apply it to this part here, this part here this part here and this part here. So it's basically the same as saying border top left radius, 50 pixels, and border top right radius. So if I was to get rid of this shorthand property, we'll put it back in just a moment, it does this. Lovely, we've just made a heart shape. Um, so let's just go ahead and uh, get rid of these. Uh, so we're basically using the shorthand property here, very useful, saves time, uh, saves space. So now we have a heart shape um, and we can go ahead and just we just sort of add the border back in if you want just to have a look at how this is all looking. And there we go. So you can see that we've just rounded off this part of the 
pseudo element, this rectangle, and that's then formed in to make a nice heart shape. Um, so there's one little last tiny thing I want to do, and that's go ahead and add a top of five pixels on here, and that's just going to make that sit really nicely uh, inside the container that we created earlier. So there you can see it's sitting really nicely inside that blue space, uh, the 200 by 170 um, container. And that's it basically. Uh, so we've used CSS to create a before and after pseudo element, style them up, rotate them, and then go ahead and give it a lovely red background and just round off the edges with the border radius, which gives us a CSS heart.